Hello friends and welcome to my channel. So friends, as you can see in the screen that today's topic of discussion is Epic Theatre. So in relation to Epic Theatre, in this session, I'm going to also discuss what was the aim of Epic Theatre and the contributions of Bartle Bridge in the field of Epic Theatre and the characteristics of Epic Theatre. So actually friends, this is a requested video. So thank you so very much for requesting this. So let's start today's session. So at first you have to know that what is epic theater. So epic theater was a dramatic or theoretical movement. As a theoretical movement, epic theater arises in the 20th century from the theories and practices of a number of theater practitioners who responded to the political climate of the time through the creation of a new political theater. So epic theater is also called didactic theater and political theater. So here it means that the theatre practitioners of the 20th century displayed the ongoing political situations through the enactment of drama, okay? So in epic theatre, the political climate of the contemporary society or contemporary time is displayed, okay? So now we have to know one important thing which is who coined the term epic theatre. So Irwin Piscator first coined the term epic theatre. So why he coined this term? He coined this term to encourage the playwrights to address issues related to the contemporary society or the contemporary existence. Apart from Irwin Piscator, Max Reinhardt also influenced this theoretical style. Okay? So epic theatre is a kind of didactic drama. This form is quite different from the other forms of drama like the Aristotelian concept of drama and the traditional dramatic theatre like the traditional comedies, tragedies, sentimental plays etc. Okay? Okay, so now we have to know that what is the main aim or purpose of epic theatre. So the main purpose or aim of epic theatre is to make the audience aware about the ongoing circumstances of the time. Actually, epic theatre was popularized in the early and mid of the 20th century. So the time was First World War. So in order to make the audience or public aware about the devastating situations of First World War, not only about the First World War, but also about the any types of wars that snatches away many lives. So if the people is aware about the devastating effects of war and if they will get inspiration from these types of plays to stop the reasons of warfare, then perhaps the society will be a better place to live in. So that was the main aim of the epic theater. So this movement or this epic theater movement doesn't aim at keeping the audience under any illusionary world. Okay, but the real aim of this type of theater is to see them, make them aware about the real world and make judgments on them. So this is the most important thing. Okay. So after this we have the major practitioners of the epic theater form. So at first we have Bertolt Brecht, who was one of the renowned practitioners of epic theater. Then we have Vladimir Mayakovsky. Then we have Irwin Piscator and B. Sevelot Mayerhold. And also we have Max Reinhardt. So after this we have to know briefly about Bertolt Brecht because he was the major practitioner of epic theater. Okay. So the epic theater form was developed and popularized by Bertolt Brecht who was a German playwright. Brecht's involvement as a medical officer in the First World War and the situations he witnessed had a strong influence on him. He couldn't digest or stomach the capitalist structure of society and thus he subscribed to the Marxist approach. So friends, here we have to know that what is Marxism? So Marxism is a kind of ideological approach that was devised by Karl Marx. Marxism is a communist political and economic system. So it is not capitalist, okay? It is communist political and economic system that encourages to act as opposition to capitalism. So it is complete opposite to capitalism. Brecht in his book called A Short Organum for the Theater discussed about epic theater. He warns that the audience should question, think what they are watching. Thus, Brecht doesn't subscribe the idea of the classical or the conventional approaches of theater like tragedies, comedies, etc. And he wants to make the contemporary reality visible on stage. Now one question arises that the earlier plays like restoration plays, comedies also displayed the reality of the contemporary society. But they are not like epic theater or epic theater doesn't resemble to that type of traditional conventional theater. 
so epic theater doesn't resemble to any kind of plays or traditional dramas like comedy of manners comedy of intrigue so these dramas satirize or use the weapon of satire to display the contemporary society's reality but the main aim of epic theater is not to satirize but to bring out a kind of awareness in audiences or the spectators mind about the situation so that they can question they can think rationally and they can make judgments on the things that they are watching so friends after this we have to know about the characteristics of epic theater at first we have the alienation effect or war frame dance effect so friends this alienation effect is quite important and it is also a quite complex term it actually means that the audience are not emotionally attached to the theme of the play or to the situations or conventions and thus this technique means the alienation technique aims at distancing the audience emotionally and it also increases their intellectual response to the drama okay after this we have didacticism as another feature of epic theater so after this another feature is historification so it means that so in this type of dramas the practitioners set events into another place and in another time the main aim of doing this is to distance the emotional impact okay and to enhance the intellectual impact upon the audience or the spectators so as i said before that arousing the intellectual impact or intellectual judgment of the spectator is important in epic theater that's why you have to maintain the distance of arousing emotional impact upon the audience the practitioners of epic theater used historification okay up next we have narration after this we have gestures so here gestures means the movements or the gestures of the actors okay up next we have fragmentary costumes and props so generally fragmentary means a kind of broken or in, incomplete thing but in this case fragmentary costume or props it means that the practitioner use single items of clothing and of props which represents a larger item or larger thing so in case of fragmentary costume single item of clothes represents the entire costume setup and the entire setting okay so now we have song so so in this case songs are used to communicate messages okay so the songs are like bibles parables after this we have a direct address to the audience so next we have open white lighting so open white lighting is used in epic theater in place of the colored light because colored light brought out a kind of emotional impact and in order to eliminate that emotional impact the practitioners used open white lighting in case of epic theater another important characteristic feature of epic theater is that here the scenes are loosely connected means there are flashbacks flash forwards large jumps between the episodes etc okay so friends these are the characteristics of epic theater So friends thank you so very much for watching this video and i hope that this video will help you for sure okay so bye for now see you in the next session very soon